All right, so now we're going to move on and we're going to look at definite integrals. Right? We've seen indefinite integrals, which is just a fancy way of talking about antiderivatives. And we're going to start with this question. We're not going to answer it right away, but it is one of the, the motivating questions for, for this problem of integration. You've got a curve, right? It's, so this is it's the graph of some continuous positive function. And you've got the graph between x equals a and x equals b, and you want to know how much area is there contained in this region between, for x between a and b, and y between 0 and the curve, right? Um, well, an, an initial but kind of useless answer is to say that, well, this is exactly what we mean by this so-called definite integral, okay? Um, and this is kind of a heuristic definition, if you like, for, for definite integrals, all right? We define it as, okay, it has something to do with area under a curve, right? Or it is area under a curve. Um, the problem with that as a definition is that it's, it's not that useful if you want to prove theorems and develop properties and understand how this integral works, right? Um, because right now we don't have the first idea about how to compute that area. We're going to see how to do that in the next section. We talk about Riemann sums. We're going to go over that. We're going to see how we solve that problem, okay? Um, so that's what we're moving towards. We're moving towards this area question, right? But the other thing we want to understand is we want to understand this connection between this integration problem, finding area, and antiderivatives. And we say, well, it seems like these have nothing to do with each other, right? But they kind of do, because we can think about velocity, right? So if you consider, consider velocity, right? Um, on the one hand, we know that given position, say, uh, Let's say we call our position maybe S of T. S is commonly used for position. Um, we know that uh, we know that the velocity as a function of time is just the derivative of the position function. Okay, so we know that, right? So given the position, we take the derivative, we get the velocity. Good. Another thing we know is that for constant velocity, let's just call it v, right? We know that position, and let me use s again, s is just that constant value times time, right? So your, your distance traveled, or maybe we should use d for displacement, but um, the distance traveled over some period of time is just your velocity times that interval of time, okay? But now if you, if you think about that graphically, what do you get, right? So we graph position as a function of time, right? And we say, okay, well actually, sorry, let me do, not position, let me do velocity. So we have velocity as a function of time, and we mark off that, that constant value, right? Here's our constant velocity, v, right? Um, and and maybe, maybe we should say not just velocity times time, but maybe kind of a, you know, and, you know, final time minus initial time. So we mark those off too, right? So we say, okay, there's a, there's a t0, that's like our a over there, by the way and our T1, right? Okay, um, well, what does that get us? Well, this distance from here to here, if we think of it as a distance, is just T0 minus T1, right? That's what we've got. And our displacement, our distance travel, is just the product right? The product of this width times this height. It means that 
or displacement is just the area. Okay? All right. Interesting. So on the one hand, position is an antiderivative of velocity. On the other hand, uh, we, can, we can get position by thinking in terms of an area, if we're, if we're plotting velocity versus time, right? If we have constant velocity, we get something like this, right? Um, we maybe go one step further with this, right? We can think about, well, you know, what about, what about when you have sort of constant acceleration, right? Um, what about, let's say, let's say we know that our, our velocity is, you know, this, we have some initial velocity minus, so if we use imperial units, 32 feet per second squared, um, some initial velocity minus 32 t, right? And so maybe, you know, excel we're doing acceleration due to gravity here, right? And so we have something like, you know, so let's say that's t equals zero. So here's our v zero. And we have something like that, right? And then we think about, okay, um, what would be the position as a function of time, right? Well, the position is going to be it's going to be some initial position, right? Plus v0 times t. We saw this in an earlier example uh, with antiderivatives minus 16t squared, right? We have something like that. Okay, and you can you can play around with these, and you can think about well, you know, what's the? Let's say I, I kind of go until some time t1 over here, right? And, and here's our t0. And we say, what's the, what's the total displacement, right? Um, so the total displacement would be, would be the s at t1 um, minus the s at t0, right? So you would have something that looked like, what would it look like? Well, s at t1 minus s at t0. Um, that initial position is going to cancel, right? That's not going to matter. So you're going to have, you're going to have minus 16 t1 squared plus 16 t0 squared plus v0 t1 minus v0 t0. You get an equation that looks something like that, right? Um, and remember that this is, what is this line, right? We can work out the equation of that line. Uh, we can work out that intercept, right? When is v of t equal to 0? V of t is going to be equal to 0 when t is equal to v0 over 32, okay? Um, and you can start playing around and you can say, all right, what's the area, what's the area of this little triangle here, right? Um, area of this little triangle, half base times height, right? You can you start playing around with these things. Um, we have the base, we have the height play around um, and you start realizing that hey there's some there's some connections between these things um, I'm not going to go through them all now but um, you can do that you can look at various scenarios here and you start seeing some connections between kind of displacement on the one hand area on the other hand and this is you know taking you towards this picture of area under the curve and that having something to do with antiderivatives right that's where we're heading. Uh, but we're going to look at a few of these velocity-related examples before we get there.